New policy on unlawful presence for F1, J1 students and scholars and their dependents. Violation examples. This video will review in depth two of the common violations that occur for international students and scholars resulting in unlawful presence. Example number one, working without employment authorization. Pay close attention to immigration regulations around employment. Make sure you have the appropriate authorization and work only during the authorized period. All work done outside of Stanford University requires authorization. J1s in the student category, however, require authorization for both on and off campus employment. J1 scholars are not allowed to work outside of Stanford, but they may engage in the occasional off site lectures or consultations where they have to receive authorization prior to the activity. The case of F1 student Zhao. Zhao is an F1 student who was approved for CPT work authorization one summer. He ended up working an extra day without authorization since he didn't pay much attention to the end date of his CPT authorization. He thought nothing of it. Zhao later graduates, works on OPT, and his employer files an H-1B petition for him. During the processing of his H-1B petition, USCIS discovers that Zhao worked without authorization, and, as a result, it automatically ended his legal status. Zhao has been accruing unlawful presence since that summer. Because it has been over a year since he worked that one extra day, he is subject to being barred from returning to the U.S. for 10 years. Example number two, remaining in the U.S. beyond the grace period. Remaining in the U.S. beyond the grace period is an immigration status violation. One way it can happen is if you file for a change of status, such as changing status from F1 to J1, or from J1 to H1B, without leaving the U.S. and it is still pending past your grace period. If your petition is denied after this time, you would accrue unlawful presence after the denial date. The case of J1 scholar Amrita. Amrita is a J1 postdoc who plans to change her status to H1B without leaving the U.S. when she begins her staff appointment as a research associate. Her department submits her H1B request to Bechtel two months before her current J1 status expires and does not want to pay for premium processing to receive a decision from USCIS within 15 days. Processing times for a change of status to H-1B can take at least three to four months. If Bechtel files her change of status petition without premium processing, by the time USCIS decides on her petition, it would be well past the end of her J status and her grace period. The risk in this scenario is that if the H-1B petition is denied, she will begin to accrue unlawful presence effective the day after the denial notice. She also may be subject to deportation proceedings. To remove the risk of having unlawful presence, her petition should be filed using premium processing, or she departs the U.S. after her J status ends and waits outside the U.S. while her H-1B petition is pending.